Hello, and welcome back to What's Bubbling at Zim... I'm Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're going to continue to take a look at what's new in Zim, version Zim 00. Let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com. Okay, so we can go to our mini site in the news. So if I click on news, here it is. This is an entrance to the mini site. Here are some things on the mini site so far as, as we um, launch more features in Zim version Zim. Then we'll continue to put those here. So that links into the mini site. Or, if you wanted to, you could go to Examples. And under Examples, well, press press this one right here, Collections. And there it is right there, Zim Features. So this is the mini site, Zim Zim Features. <laughs> Zim NFT Features. Uh, Zim Cat Features. Zim 10 Features. Zim Neo Features. All right, so those are mini sites. You could click on it there. Or... Uh, uh, we could at any time click on a banner. So here we go. Press on a banner, comes in, starts to make our puzzle for us. Oh, wow. Let's see what this puzzle looks like, huh? Uh, oh, very nice. Hmm. It gave us, it gave us one. Uh, nice. Shall we solve it together? Looks like this is ultimately solvable, isn't it? Oh, darn. I think that's all up at the top. Ooh. Hmm, yeah. There we go! Look at oh, the depth in that. And then it makes uh, another puzzle for us. So, uh, in the very first bubbling, we talked more about the puzzle. Nice. Looks This one does look very 80s. This one might be 90s based. There, there's different uh, styles to it. And if you just do a refresh of the puzzle, like if I... Oh, that wasn't a refresh. That was... If we just do a refresh of the puzzle, then it will chop it up in a different way. So watch this one. By the way, the length of time that that's taking is it needs to go to all four corners. And once it goes to all four corners, then we chop it up. So this <laughs> is going back and forth between these two corners. This is like dum de dum de dum de dum de dum. But oh, nice. But you never know what the how that's going to chop up. So. Oh, look at how quickly I can do this too. Um, despite there being like it looks like there's uh, it's like complicated to do the slats, the slats are are easier. Yay! And off it goes and makes another one. So on we go through here. Now we've looked at how to make pick vid odd and SVG in one of the other bubblings. We've looked at how to handle key out in one of the other bubblings. No, nope. by the way, you see what happened there? This is keyed out. I can't actually pick it up and drag it. It's like a bitmap that's transparent there, basically. So I can't pick that up, but I can do that. Interesting. Uh, I could always expand that if I wanted to. If you hit expand or expand zero, then it would put uh, an invisible hit area around it. So you can do that. We've seen the new color picker and the, the chroma keying there as well. And here is what the, the current bubbling is about, the Zim Pixel. So we have a new class called Zim Pixel, which pixelates. Can you tell what that's a pixel of? Mm, well, here's an overlay. <laughs> this is a, or if we wanted to, we could move the pixelation down. So there's what it looks like, no pixelation. So what we're doing is adjusting how much it's pixeled by this slider and it's like whoa yeah so there's dr abstract abstract very very abstract dr abstract is that cool there's my orange orange sunglasses my shoulders <laughs> this is bizarre huh? um but you can also unlock this right so and then change the amount of only one size uh, so here i am i guess pixelating this quite a lot but this not very much at all so there's no, oh wait, lots of pix, oh yeah, okay. So very much pixelation here. I have to reduce this down to get hardly any pixels in the slats. Nice, but do you see how that starts making art? Doesn't that look cool? I like it. This is how blurry that is. So you can blur that a lot. And by the way, these effects are different than the Zim effects. These are, in a sense, you could call them native effects. All we're doing is shrinking the picture 
turning off any aliasing or any anti-aliasing yeah turning off any anti-aliasing and then making it bigger again it's actually faster to turn off the anti-aliasing than not so this is almost faster than <laughs> rescaling normally <laughs> and so it's like oh, okay which means it's really really fast as a matter of fact let's go to the next one this is us making uh pixels of can you can you see what that is that's the emitter so this is a plain Zim emitter. Then we're pixelating it. And as we redraw the pixelization, where we've got a blend mode going on, we're also caching in some way, but generally uh, it would, you know, we're just making these pixels. <laughs> Isn't that so cool? Wow, it's amazing, I love it. The A factor and the B factor back here on this one lets us zoom in on a certain type of, of pixels. So uh, it'll, it'll start changing it as, as we do it here. Basically, if I bring down the amount factor, so I'm bringing it down to a smaller amount, it looks like it's less pixeled. But basically what it's doing is it's making the range only work on this, uh, you know, small amount. This is now I'm at a maximum. And you see, I'm, so it'll, it's kind of like the sensitivity. It lets me choose different pixel settings. If, focused on this range. Whereas if I bring up the amount factor, now uh, my range is more in the very pixelated uh, side of things, where I've got a bunch of different options here on the very pixelated side of things. Uh, by the way, on this pixelated side, do you see how that side is jumping? I maybe shouldn't point this out, but we can't figure out how to stop that from happening, that little, the edge. So it's sort of at different, it's almost like the pixels are powers of two, or I don't know what the heck is going on or why that is. So could not figure that out in the code. If anybody has a solution to that, um, it's all a little bit twisty how we're doing it. It's like inception. This is being passed into that, which is already being passed into this, which is, you know, there we go, pixels. And it's like, okay, but why when I reduce the scale of this, does it change the right hand side? And I can't seem to get it to, I don't know, crop it or maximize it or rescale it in a certain way to make it work. So anyway, at the moment, it just bounces a bit back and forth on the side there. And we don't know why. That's me giving my middle finger to it. There we go. See? Oh, what fun with pixel art. Uh, blur factor is, is for the blur. And blur, by the way, it's nice to have a blur. So there's a blur. It's just because we didn't, um, because of the scaling. So that's a blur due to scaling. And uh, the blur factor is how, how you focus that. So that's quite blur. That gives us some nice blurs. Ooh, artistic blurs. Really, really fast. Really, really cheap. So it's not like the blur filter, which is going through every pixel and doing something. This one just... <laughs> And like I said, it's native. <laughs> it's native. Turning the picture crappy native. <laughs> and it actually kind of looks cool. So there we go. Um, that is in Pixel. Let's then take a look at the code inside. Here's ZimPixel. This is the first one with the slider. So it's not too great to look. Actually, I showed you really what I wanted to show you in this bubbling. Remember, this is not an explore where we go through and go through every detail of the code. And this is a bit more complicated, this code, because we've got all these sliders that are changing the properties. It's really easy to apply this, really easy to apply pixel. Maybe we should look at pixel two first. That becomes a little complicated too because we're applying these blend modes. But basically, it's like this. How about, how about this? We'll just erase all this stuff. I'll make the interface still, comment that out instead of erase. Here we go. New pixel, new circle. Mm, 50 comma red dot center. Okay, so you just take any, any Zim display object, including interfaces, font or text, like a label, um, slider, shapes, a bitmap, whatever it is, and just say new pixel on it. And 
then it becomes a bitmap. So now this is a bitmap and we're centering it. So let's have a look. Open in Browser Plus. Aww, look, it's so cute. How about a hundred? Yeah, a little raggedy uh, on the edge. And then we can play with the the amount. So the amount is the next thing, 0.5. I can't remember what the default is. Maybe it was 0.5. If we don't pixel it a lot, 0.1. There's little jaggedy pixels around the edge there. If I go to 0.3, it's pixelated more around the edge. If I go to something like 0.7, <laughs> quite a lot pixeled <laughs> point uh, six. Oh, oh broken arm so a slider would take us through these values and you could maybe find them a bit better five five let's see what we get there slightly different you never quite know what you're going to get with it okay so that uh, that looks like that how about a new dial if we pixelate a new dial, let's scale that dial dot ska to. Oh, that's a Zim dial. The thing about this too is it works. Uh, you can, uh, I can't remember exactly how you do it. Um, you turn it dynamic, first of all. So pixel is static. It just takes a sort of a screenshot of it. But if you turn it dynamic, then it will monitor it and it will pixel a moving something that's moving. So let's go look at the, the docs for that. Pixel. <clears throat> dynamic is right here. So we've got the amount, the amount Y, and the blur. All right. That's the amount null for the amount y. That's how you can change the pixelation um, on both the x and the y. And then you've got the blur, null, to deep, probably z zero, and then dynamic true. We might need dynamic true to operate the dial. No, it's, it's something else. Like being a snapshot of it, I think what we have to do is put dial underneath it, new dial should be doing this live with you. New dial dot ska. No, that's all that stuff. Try a dot center. And then we'll take this dial, const d. Const d is equal to a new dial. And pass it on in. And let's see what happens. So I can see the other dial there. Uh, let's just refresh what a dial looks like so you know so everywhere not pixelating it there's the dial what i'm trying to do is move the dial and have it move the pixel um then uh, let's just try reducing the alp of that to like uh, maybe we can make it um just just try point one for now so we can see a little bit of it oh well Still, that should work, I think. If we pixelate it, I don't think the alpha matters, but I can't remember for sure. No, it doesn't. But now it's it's not updating it. Is that the dynamic? And I, I can't tell if I'm moving the dial or not. Let's put the dial on top. Maybe I can't, that's it. I can't select the dial through the pixel. So uh, dot no mouse. This is one way, or we could put the dial on top. So no mouse means Allow me to press through it. Let's see if we can. Oh, <laughs> so cute. Do you see what's happening? We've got like a dial that is a pixel, a pixel dial. Uh, so I, I would really like to make a whole app and then just pixelate it. But you can kind of tell that, that that would be a little tricky because certain things looks a little ragged at times. So maybe it would work. Maybe it wouldn't. Um, it depends. If this were a lot smaller, it would be even harder to, to control or to manage. But it's not bad. What was the 0.5 on that? I'm getting a little extra bump on that that I don't want. Ooh, there we go. <laughs> That's hilarious, isn't it? Don't you find that hilarious? I love it. So once again, we had the original dial there. Do we really need that? Yeah, I think we really need that. The original dial that will be operating, the pixel is just a bitmap. If we set the dynamic to true, it will assume that 
whatever it's pixelating, this dial right here. Uh, so we could probably throw all that if we wanted to right there. Oh, makes a difference. There we go. <laughs> nice. Huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay. Wow, this has been a bubbling. Um, so anyway, there there are. Well, I'm gonna get a call. Uh, just a second. Just work that out that way. Hopefully that wasn't too <laughs> too serious. So we've commented all this stuff out. <clears throat> My apologies. Most of that stuff was slider work. There were a bunch of sliders in there. Uh, I think if I recall, yeah, we did have some simple ones. We started off with a slider and hey, let's wire that to the amount X. Look at that. So there, there was something that we were pixelating. We made a new slider with a min and max between zero and one, set a current value, position that slider and just wired it to the thing we, to our pixel, wired the amount to that. And that worked. I was like, mm -hmm. that's really nice. And so we did both X and Y on that. And then we started wiggling something because you can animate how much stuff is squiggled as well. And so we started wiggling how much it pixelated. We're experimenting with a few things and then realized that we wanted to do a bunch of things. So there's our set of sliders that are all added to the list. So that's how we handled this thing on the right hand side. It's kind of like dat GUI in HTML. Dat GUI, if you come from the processing side, you might be familiar with dat GUI. We did something vaguely similar, I suppose. So there's a bunch of checkbox sliders all within a list like that, which means if you have more, you can start to scroll them. You can collapse them and open them using the accordion list. We have a code pen version of that list. So there's all the stuff in that. And at that point, you sort of say what you're controlling. So the amount, or no, we're calling do amount, which is calling that function every time that slider changes, and that's what we're adjusting. And we're adjusting the Y, and we're adjusting the check to be able to <laughs> do whatever. The, oh, to lock the two sliders. So this makes the sliders lock together. And then this is the overlay to make that visible. So those are your various functions right here that are being called. But some of them, like the blur and the amount, and that stuff's directly right in there. That's similar to the wire, but we had to do it in the slider in a list parameter. That's that's not new, that's that's old Zim stuff. But otherwise, there's what we're pixeling, a an asset. Oh, we should make that an image, or now we, as we learned, image dot bitmap. Oh, no, sorry, <laughs> that's really wrong. Uh, we didn't have image, we can't use it, so we have to call it new pick. New pick, like that. In the headshot, we can pixelate that. We don't have to go the bitmap of it. That should work. And there's the, the new um, zoom picture in there. Very nice. Who is that guy? That Dr. Abstract fellow. My goodness. All right. Um, that's that one. The next one is this one right here which is following the mouse. So there's an emitter that's following the mouse <laughs> forever. And here is the pixels. Close that if I can. Here is the pixel two version. So what do we have? We have a holder on the stage with a visible false. We've got a motion controller. We're motion controlling the emitter we're not fading it, so that means the pixels will be seen better because they, they continue uh, to be seen. <laughs> it's not fading. We're centering this and the holder. The reason we've got a holder is we're wanting to then pixelate the holder. So don't pixel the emitter because the emitter has uh, particles, a particles container. You could possibly pixelate the particles container, but it's easier just to throw the whole thing into a container that you can see because the emitter has a particles container, but you don't even know that exists really. So anyway, that's uh, the thoughts. You can also, in this case, we're just, it's a standard emitter, but you can also emit pixels. So that looks cool too. Uh, like the circle of pixels that we made, we could emit a bunch of little pixels and we tried that. That's in the docs, the, the docs example. Very beautiful, as a matter of fact. Hey, it's kind of worth it to look at here, so. 
the hick link. Hmm, don't know what is going on there, but I'm going now to the docks and uh, oh, I am in the docks and looking here for pixel. And here, right here, is an example. Here, here, right here. So, new emitter. That was, uh, oh, so the emitter right here is emitting this object, make pixel. That's a Zim V value. So, whatever, in other words, when the emitter runs, it'll keep on calling make object over and over again. And make object is this, uh oh, make pixel, sorry. Make pixel is right here. And we're returning a new pixel of the circle. That's going to be this random color and have a little bit of a border maybe and a, whatever and have an alpha down center ridged. So that's the pixel that we're operating on. Remember a pixel is a bitmap which has normally its registration points top less lop, top left corner. So that's why we're using the new dot red. Well, dot reg we've had but center uh, automatically centers in both the X and Y. Thank you Carl for the uh, recommendation there and thank you I can't remember who said to even put maybe he said that or maybe it was Amy said to make these um, I think it was Carl as well so that's Andy or we could center reg that if we center reg it though it's a touch of a pain because center reg will add it to the stage whereas this does not add it if you center reg you would then say squiggly brackets add colon false and won't add it at the same time so this is maybe my new favorite way to center something or in the registration point. So we're taking that and we're running it on the emitter. And shall we see what it looks like? We've adjusted some of the things that it's doing in the emitter. It looks like a lot, but emitters are fun. I think the Zim emitters are so simple compared to other particle emitters I've seen that I, I'm doing this just like I'm talking to you, basically. It just comes together so easily. And uh, in here, what we'll do is we'll grab pixel two, we'll get rid of the holder Well, you know what? Maybe I just should just finish this before we, we do end. I, I was saying that we put a common emitter into the holder, and then we put the holder into the pixel. We've decided how much to pixelate that, made it dynamic, because the whole container is changing. The pic This is like dynamic in there. It's, uh, it's moving. Um, so when we pixel it, we have to turn on the dynamic. And we've applied a color burn over top of it, and then center reg the whole thing. I don't know why it's center regged. Because we're animating something. What is this? One to three. Oh yeah, that's right. We're fading. So this is blitting, it's called, where we take a bitmap of whatever pixel is. So we're taking a copy of it. We're adding it underneath and we're animating its alpha in a certain amount of time. I think at some point I was animating at scale two and center regged would have helped with that. But otherwise we don't need center regged. And then once it's done, we dispose it. We're uncaching the holder. What was the holder? Holder.uncache. I don't know why we had to do that. Uncaching it would turn it live again. Oh. Uh, this is very quick. So this is happening, even though it's happening a min between one and three, that's a Zim V value passed in there. So that will make our interval run between these two times rather than always at the same time. So uh, even though we're waiting that long, this happens right away. So basically we're taking a snapshot and then we're uncaching the snapshot sort of thing, I think, or something like that anyway. And there we go. That That is blitting. Blitting used to be really hard for me. Now blitting is pretty easy. With the new pixel, we can just it fairly easily. Um, so I wanted to finish off the description of that before we remove it and paste in what we had from the docs. Oh. Tab. So here we go. Let's have a look. Open in browser plus. Oh. So now instead of turning the whole emitter into a pixel or like pixel stuff we're turning each of the circles that we're emitting into pixels aren't they cute uh, i just want to like stick my head in there 
All right, well, um, there we have it. Let's undo that, though. That was the example from the docs. And this has been a What's Bubbling Zim. Um, that was example from the docs. And let's see, was that the last of the current examples? I think it is. So if we take a look at, well, you can find them in the examples if you wanted to, but we go back to our mini site here. Whoosh. Oh, that looks like a cool one. We've looked at that. If I go backwards here, it's the pixel one. Yay. Okay. So we've seen all of that just wraps around. So we've seen all of the examples now in the mini site. We'll probably add some more as we go along, but we may have to wait until Zim version Zim 01. Who knows? Uh, things slow down a little bit as your framework is it gets more complete. I expect it would probably be, in, uh, I don't know, another four months or so until we launch a 01. Depends on how many new features we can think about before then. Could even be uh, into the summer or autumn or so before we launch a new version. This has been an enormous amount of work enormous amount of work to um, add these features and do our ES6 linting and all that kind of stuff um, on top of enormous amount of work for for uh, uh, to adjust the site there's all sorts of pages in the site you wouldn't you wouldn't believe it um, have you seen our site map recently so if we go down oh blah 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 blah, blah. well site maps in the footer so all these things you know are, are things that we have to adjust here's our site map for instance so site map's been updated. Those are the main sections. Here's our banners. They remain pretty well the same. Here's um, stuff relating to the news. There's stuff relating to the about. Here's stuff, um, oh, these are ex prime examples and areas. Uh, Zim Learn and uh, places. And so many of these things had templates. And you can grab all of that stuff. Uh, so here's the PWA, for instance. There's the new template on the mobile PWA. Uh, there's the progressive web apps. Uh, trusted. Okay, let's see. What do I want to see? Zim Zaps right here. Here's the dark version of it um, with the Zim Zaps. And there's the new footer and the header, etc. Okay, so lots of work. It was exciting. I hope um, we've made the site look a little bit more professional perhaps we took away some of our characters oh so for instance on the home we've now got the bar here instead of the characters there's still pragma down there high pragma in in some places but remember the news had the character all the all the characters sort of removed a little bit and seeing if we can oh yeah, yeah we're professional i'm not sure about that but um anyway uh but we still want to be friendly of course to the youth but also to professionals so we had made a dev site for professionals here it is we've left the dev site in its look although it would have been fine with the new header i'm sure but we've left it there with this and you can see that we've had a bit of influence heading towards being acceptable um, to the the devs as well as uh, to uh, the <laughs> Not necessarily more fun people, <laughs> the more expressive people of the world, the artists, the NFTers, the uh, the kids. Uh, along those lines, school, um, school down here in the footer, we in the footer. School will be moved into right now. It's the old, it's the Zim 10, um, which became uh, went on through to Cat and NFT as well. So this is the old Zim logo. Uh, our Zim logo is not this anymore. And so we'll move Zim School. We considered leaving Zim School in this look. It's not bad for high school. It sort of feels nice. But I think what we'll do is put the, the new header on. And you see how we've got Lesson 1, Lesson 2, Lesson 3, etc. Those lessons will be on uh, here. Lesson 1, Lesson 2, Lesson 3. So we want in the school for them not to really come out and look at all this stuff. This is just too much. We'll keep them in the school as much as possible. So these main links on the bar along the top will be the lesson links and then the rest of the schools in there. Zim Kids here uh, will stay uh, much the same way. 
instead of putting the new header on. Again, we don't want the kids to come out into the main version of Zim. The only way in there is this. Probably would be a good idea though. I don't know. Might be nice to say the word Zim there, but uh, we could put the, that's an old logo now. We could put the little Z in there. This one's fine. That was an old Zim logo, but you can see that we've progressed. This is almost like blocks at the time. Um, so be it. This was our first real logo. Uh, and we've progressed from that time on to be Zim. Cool, huh? So come on in, enjoy. And the next bubbling, we're going to do one more bubbling on general updates. So those are all found in the updates right here. So we, we've seen these guys. Well, we don't need to go over this again. We've seen the modules, etc. But there's a bunch in here. We saw pixels. We saw the site. We saw the spectrum. Good. We saw chroma key. We talked about ESLint. Yep. Uh, but there's six, seven window optimization, single touch, a uh, whole bunch of, look at all the examples in general. So we need to do a bubbling to take us through that stuff. Uh, we've just mentioned a couple of these things that we're planning on updating. Oh, all the docs, we're planning on putting all the doc to ES6 as well, all the examples. So I'm Dr. Abstract. This has been a What's Bubbling at Zim. Oh, that looks fun and refreshing. That's us in VR. Wearing bubbles for this pop party. We had a pop party. We played pop. Uh, there was a Zim exhibit in the Skylight Gallery that, at the Pagoda Scope, and that's the Zim exhibit there. Those are all the happies hanging out uh, with us as I do an artist talk. <laughs> um, lots of fun in VR. And uh, all the NFTs that I've been making with Zim are all on the walls at the Pagoda Scope. We've got special sp spaghetti scopes. Uh, we've got special Pagoda Scopes for the various um, uh, Time Lord watch bands and, and different uh, meta, meta projects that we were doing. All right, we had the meta mystery before there was even meta. Planning on doing a talk, by the way, in VR on meta, what meta means and... Um, sort of the nuances of it. I've been teaching meta in the creativity framework for about 10 years now and telling everybody, hey, teach your kids about meta, really hinging creativity on it. And then uh, I'll look at what's happened. What do you know? <laughs> I'm Dr. Abstract. Have a great day or night. And we'll see you at zimjs.com slash discord or zimjs.com slash slack. Cheers. <laughs>